Morning, family. God, good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Devos. Your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez. Your brother in Christ, amen, who loves you, amen. And listen, I ask for forgiveness. If I messed up, if I, um, you know, insulted you, if I did anything wrong to you right now, I'm asking for forgiveness publicly, amen. So because I don't know, some people hold grudges, amen. And I used to hold grudges, not really that hardcore with it, amen. Um, but some people that came across my life and that were in my life that hurt me and I hurt them. Amen. It took time for me to get over and to stop harboring unforgiveness and to really restore things when I forgive. Amen. <clears throat> I'm freely forgiven. So it's, you know, I have audacity not to forgive somebody else. That's uh, that's like arrogant for me not to forgive if I'm forgiven. Amen. And if you're a born again believer, you already know what that's all about. <clears throat> we are forgiven. Amen. So we need to forgive. So Johnny Bougie, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you as well on the Morning Devo. Brother Ricky, God bless you. Good morning, my brother, my friend. Good to see you on the Morning Devo as well. So today is like a little heavy than normal, amen. Um, but it is, it is a topic nonetheless. Um, no grudges, amen. Easier said than done. But the Word of God has a staple on it. The Word of God tells us to have no grudges. So therefore, guess what? <laughs> we should have no grudges. Do you have anyone in your life right now that you refuse to forgive? Think about it. Is there anyone right now that you refuse to forgive right now? And to top that off, how's that working out for you? How has that affected you when you're holding unforgiveness in your heart? Amen. I heard it said that unforgiveness is like, what do you call it? Um, Cancer to your soul. Amen. Amen. Unforgiveness really harbors other things as long that goes with it, like hatred. Unforgiveness holds anger. Unforgiveness holds a whole lot of things. Amen. So what is it that you're holding on to right now against somebody else? And let, let's 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 put everything else to the side. I'm talking about you and me. Amen. So if somebody did you wrong, yeah, you know you're angry. It's hard to forgive sometimes. Um, but what are you holding on to? Because that other person or those other people or that other organization might not even care. They might be keeping it moving and yet you are dealing with unforgiveness. You're harboring hatred. You're harboring all these things in your heart because you refuse to forgive. So no grudges today in the morning, Devo. Amen. As it's going to help a lot of people out in that area. Good morning to you as well um, on Facebook. Amen. Amen. It's going good. Johnny, good. I hope it continues to go good in your life. So let's do this. Let's take an opportunity right now to share any comments, questions, concerns, or any prayer requests. I'm a prayer warrior. I love to pray. It'll be my honor to pray for you for your requests. But if you don't want it publicly, I understand that perfectly. Amen. Because a lot of people don't want their prayer requests public. So you could always inbox me on any of the social media platforms that you're listening to from or you're watching from amen there should be a way to connect with me from the podcast platforms i'm I'm available on all the major podcast platforms oh glory to god amen so when you're listening no matter whether i'm live or not if you have something to share or to communicate or pray request anything like that don't hesitate to leave that on there amen so listen let's go for it let's take a minute to pray and then we'll take a minute to share this out with as many people as possible. Um, Johnny says, give a prayer request for Zach. Amen. Okay. Um, what is the prayer request? And let me know what I'm praying for Zach about. Amen. So Father, I thank you today for being the lover of our souls, for forgiving us, even though we were trespassing against one another and we sinned against you and you still offered us forgiveness. I thank you so much I'm so grateful, Lord God, for the life that you've given us, the life and the opportunity that you give us to be born again for those who have not yet put their trust and hope and faith in you. I pray, Lord God, I had your protection over us physically, emotionally, spiritually, supernaturally, and naturally. Everything, Lord God, that is before us, Lord God, that is from you, Lord God, reveal it. Give us eyes to see, ears to listen, and a mouth to speak your word over our situation. Father God, if we're holding unforgiveness, if we're harboring hate in our hearts, help us to get that out of us. Take it from us, Lord God. And Lord God, I ask that you remove all unforgiveness in our hearts and in our minds today, right now, in the powerful name of Jesus. I speak life over every single person. 
I speak life for every single person that's connected now, that will connect later, that will listen now, that will con- listen later on the podcast. I pray a hedge of protection over them. I pray health to their bones, strength to their body, strength to their bones, health to their body. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that you will help us <clears throat> along the way as we know who offended us and who we offended. Help us to forgive. Help us to move on. Help us not to hold any grudges against anyone um, that we come in contact with. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And I know it's available. I know it's possible because when we pray to the Lord and his word says a thing, it is a thing. And I trust that and I hope and I believe in that. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. So let's take a minute to pray. Um, we took a minute to pray. Let's take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. When we come back, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 9. Proverbs 17, 9. Amen. We're talking about grudges today, and the scripture talks about it as well. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. Let's get into it. Proverbs 17, verse number 9. Love prospers. That means it increases. It does us good. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. But dwelling on it separates close friends. So, when a fault is forgiven, it's a good thing. But when you dwell on that fault, whatever that fault is, whatever that insult was, whatever... Um, cause you pain, whatever hurt, whatever betrayal, if you dwell on those things, it will separate close friends. I know that for an example through experience. Amen. It will separate close friends. So why do we hold on to unforgiveness as human beings, right? Uh, I'm speaking to everyone as a human being, as mankind. Why do we usually gravitate, especially on social media platforms? If you don't notice, if you haven't noticed, That when you put a post that's something negative, like a fight or something happened or, you know, somebody took footage of a police brutality thing, those things are going viral. But when you see a story, this is like in general, when you see a story put up or a post put up about something beautiful that happened when it comes to love, grace, mercy, it's not as much, it's not as popular as the other ones. So... Mankind, like our, it's in our human nature to hold on to stuff that's negative, and we see things that are good, amen. And we like kind of like push by it. Well, right now in the social media world, we'll you know skip through it, amen. We'll scroll right past it, I should say, in the new modern tech that we have in our, our vocabulary. We scroll right past things that are good and we focus on things that are bad. So in this scripture, it kind of lets us know about our nature, our normal normal way of thinking, which is transformed. Our thinking is transformed supernaturally when we have Jesus. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. Amen? God is love. So when we hold on to love, when we hold on to God, amen, it's all good. We're forgiven. We forgive and we move forward as hard as it could be. As big as the trespass was, as big as the betrayal was, as big as the hurt is, amen, we won't hold on to the fault. If you dwell on the fault, it separates close friends. How many people know that? Amen. How many people know that? So why would forgiveness foster love? Amen. I think forgiveness and love are cousins. Amen. 
I believe forgiveness is part of the gospel. I believe forgiveness is part of the love gospel of God. Amen. Imagine God holding on, dwelling on my sin, dwelling on your sin, and that's it. He, imagine God not seeing past our sins. Where would we be? How would that affect us? Amen. Well, then God won't forgive us. If he's dwelling on those past sins, dwelling on those future sins, dwelling on the sins that are present in our hearts and our minds right now. If God dwelt on that, amen, we will not be forgiven right now. So it's obvious that God is not staying and holding grudges against us. It's obvious that God is forgiving us. It's obvious that God is saving people. It's obvious that God is healing people. It's obvious that God is loving people because he's not dwelling on faults. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He could have a whole scroll of things about my life when it comes to sinful nature, sins, grudges, hatred, um, harboring hatred in my heart and all that stuff. He could have a whole list of things. But he does not dwell on that over my life and over your life at all. Amen. So love prospers. And how many people like to prosper? I like to prosper in all areas of life. Amen. So I speak prosperity over every area of your life right now in the powerful name of Jesus. Because love prospers. Amen. So when you're walking in love, you're you're actually walking in godliness. I'm talking about the love of God. I'm not talking about the love of this world. The love of this world is cold as like a different energy, right? It's circumstantial. It's like it's like happiness. When the circumstances are good, you're happy. But when the circumstances are bad, you're unhappy. So the love of this world compared to the love of God, amen, is totally different. The love of this world is based on situations, amen? The love of this world says that you have to love me back for me to love you. The love of this world is based upon behavior. If you act bad against me, I'm going to act bad against you. But if you love me, I'll love you. Uh, uh, but when something happens between us, it, you know it's over. Unfortunately, the world's view on love, even in marriage, is that way. It's contractual. It's not a covenant. It's not a promise. The world doesn't promise love to love one another um, through thick and thin, um, through health, um, through sickness, you know, until death. Do they part? The, the world doesn't get down like that. The world says, listen, uh, we're going to sign a, a prenup. This is a contract. And, and any time that you avoid or if you violate the contract, then uh, it's curious. We're out. We're going to separate. Amen. That's the love of this world. But the love of God says, listen, love prospers. When you walk in love, it will prosper in all areas of your life. Relationally, financially, with your business, at school, at home. Amen. Everywhere you go, love will prosper. It will prosper you and it will prosper me. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 9. Amen. This is something that we should be memorizing. Something that I'm going to memorize because I like, wow, if love prospers, that means the opposite of that does not prosper. Amen. And the opposite of love, biblically, is not hate. It's actually fear. Because the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. So a lot of us are afraid to be vulnerable enough to forgive somebody else. Because that, that takes a certain amount of vulnerability. Amen. To show, to be vulnerable, especially for men. Uh, most men don't want to show any kind of like emotion in that way, in that area. Amen. Not a lot of men do that. But I know strong men of God. They, amen. That have emotion. Amen. And that they're not afraid to love. They're not afraid to be vulnerable. They're not afraid to be humble. They're not afraid to forgive. Amen. And if they find fault in me or if I find fault in them, amen, uh, we'll go to one another and we'll talk it through. Um, We won't start gossiping. That's a man of God that's operating in love. That's a man of God that's operating in the spirit of God and the fruit of the spirit. Amen. And all that. And for women as well. Amen. Well, women, to me, in my experience, um, they have like more of a, they're more in connection with the emotion, at least in my experience with the women that I know, the woman of God. Amen. So they communicate a little better. Amen. It seems like to me, I'm not saying I'm speaking in my experience when I look at it. Amen. And their love shows. 
and they're vulnerable to one another for what I've seen. Amen. And I know it's not the case in every situation, in every relationship, and all women. I'm just saying from what I've seen with my eyes. Amen. So if love prospers, that means fear doesn't allow you to prosper. If love prospers when a fault is forgiven, then the opposite, if you don't forgive, you will not prosper. And that's not showing love because you're living in unforgiveness and you're unwilling to let things go. And if you're unwilling to let things go, you are actually holding a grudge. But today, no grudges. No grudges. Amen? Right? No grudges. Good morning to my beautiful wife, Uni Lopez. Good morning to you, sweetheart. I love you. And I have no grudge against you. Amen. So Proverbs 17, verse 9. So why would forgiveness foster love? That's a good question. Because I believe forgiveness and love are connected. I, th- I don't think you could love anyone and hold unforgiveness in your heart against that person or against those people. Amen. That's why it's strange to me how when you run into a religious person who says they love God and then they hate their brother, they hate their sister because of some differences in doctrine or religion, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. I said, you're walking in love, but you hate how we worship over here in the Pentecostal world. Uh, you hate how they worship in the Baptist world. Oh, you're a Calvinist. I'm a, uh, how you call it, the other, the other thing. Amen. Um, we can't, you know, we can't walk together um, because we have differences. Those are religious people, amen, that act that way. And Jesus confronted religious people all through his ministry here on earth. If you read <clears throat> the Gospels, you're going to see Jesus approaching and confronting these religious people who had the law of Moses, amen. They were doing <clears throat> supposedly the right things, but their hearts were cold. They were far from God. Jesus was to call them all kinds of things and, and call them out. Amen. Because the opposite of love is fear. But love prospers when a fault is forgiven. So if you're not forgiving people and you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, amen, there's no love in you that's going to prosper. But dwelling on the fault will separate close friends. Amen. Do you have anyone right now in your life? Think about it. Do you have anyone you refuse to forgive in your life right now? Amen. In this time, you know, of your life. I thought about it right before, you know, I opened up and I was like, I'm pretty clear. Amen. I'm clean. Amen. And because I I thought about it, I said, "Who, who do I have a grudge against? At this point in my life, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't even pay to have a grudge against somebody else. As you know, in my age category, amen, it wouldn't even make sense. Why would I start holding grudges now on somebody? Unfortunately, I know people, amen, that were close to my life that took grudges to the grave, amen. They took unforgiveness to the grave. That's tough, amen, to know that um, there was unforgiveness or there was situations in family or whatever that they took to the grave. Secrets that they held tight to, even to the grave. And I pray and I hope that I won't be one of those people. Amen. Um, that might not be a good thing to hold unforgiveness to the grave, but to hold a grudge against someone else until the grave. That's to me. That's strange, and it's hard to, you know, understand that. But I understand people deal with forgiveness differently. Amen. And I have to respect that. But I I really urge you, I plead with you to have no grudges against anyone. Forgive those who've messed up. And you probably have the right right now to say, yeah, that person or those people, they hurt me so bad. I'm not going to forgive them. But then you're actually going against the scriptures. Amen. I was there. Trust me. I was in a situation when it took me a decade to forgive someone in my heart. Ten years it took. I thought when I got saved, it was going to be easy for me to forgive everybody. But that wasn't the case. I was still holding on. Amen. I'm delivered. But at that moment, I was still holding on to some things. And one of those things that I was holding on to was <clears throat> grudges and unforgiveness. It took me a decade, ladies and gentlemen. And I know a lot of people want to admit, oh, you know, I forgive right away. A lot of people will, will be phony about this. They won't be real about it. But if you know me, you follow me, you know, I'm going to say what it is and how it is. Amen. In my life, it took me 10 years, ladies and gentlemen, to forgive a situation, a person that did a situation that happened in my life that really messed me up for a while. Amen. 
So I'm glad that God had the grace and mercy upon my life to live past that, to live through that. Amen. <clears throat> that he didn't take me or that I didn't you know, pass on in that time of unforgiveness, because that's a mystery to me. What would happen if I had gone um, f- that left this earth <clears throat> holding on to that unforgiveness, holding on to that grudge? It's a mystery to me. What would happen? Amen. And I don't want to play those sound of type of I call them eternal Russian roulette, amen. Play around with my eternity, play around with my destiny. I don't want to play around with that. Hopefully, you don't want to play around with that either. So, forgive if you can't find the strength in your own life to forgive somebody else for what they done or what you thought they did or whatever the situation is. That's when we can hold on to God's word. That's when we could go to God, amen, and ask Him to help us to forgive. Ask him to get understanding and clarity of how to forgive, even in the worst situations. Amen. I've seen clips of of people in court, Christian people in court, that their children, um, their child was murdered. For one one case, I saw um, the mom and the dad were in the courtroom, and they were facing in the court, facing the person that murdered their child, and it was so heartbreaking to me. Um, and so like tough and I'm thinking about it would, would I have done that and they literally publicly in that courtroom forgave the killer the murderer of their child right there in the courtroom because they were believers and they said they they did it because they love God amen and they forgave this this man I was like man would I have done that it's challenging to me amen don't look at me like that as, as if you would have did that easily amen it probably be challenging to you too but for me, I'm thinking about it. I said, man, I, I can't even imagine that. Um, but it was it was public. It was all over um, social media, all over the news and everything. That they actually offered the murderer of their child forgiveness. Uh, what a blessed life is that couple, that family, that marriage going to, to live on. Because they're actually showing uh, a real-time example of God's grace for us. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. We're in Proverbs 17, 9. So if you have, let's say, if you refuse to forgive people, amen, how do you think that's going to affect your life? Because you heard it time and time again. If you haven't heard it, let me remind you of, a, of what I, I learned through life experience. Sometimes people do things, right? And... You're like, I'm not going to forgive that person. You refuse to forgive them. You're holding on to the fault. And that other person, you can hold on to it two two years, five years, ten years. Either the other person doesn't even know that you have a grudge against them. Or sometimes they're not even here on this planet Earth. Sometimes they died and you're still holding on to you refusing to forgive this person. And they're not even here on the Earth. So it's like holding on and having grudges is really a waste of time. If you really think about it and you imprison yourself, you put yourself in own your own prison of unforgiveness and the other people or the person is free. So when we forgive someone, we're actually <clears throat> we're actually freeing ourselves up from any kind of imprisonment, whether it's mentally, whether it's supernaturally, whether it's naturally, whatever the case may be, you're taking yourself out of the prison of unforgiveness because when you're holding and harboring unforgiveness in your heart, you're actually bringing um, the prison to your life. You're stagnant in certain situations in your life because you refuse to forgive. So my suggestion, amen, amen, is go for it, man. Forgive. Don't hold on to unforgiveness. It's not. It's not. It's not cool. It's not how you call it. <clears throat> It's not prospering you. It's not helping you. It's actually hurting you when you hold on to forgiveness. And when you have a grudge for somebody, towards somebody, amen, then you're actually displaying your your sinful nature. You're not displaying godly nature. You're, you're displaying your sinful nature. You're saying, I'm better than that person. That's what you're actually saying. So I won't let that person off of that fault. Amen. Can you imagine if Jesus was on that cross and, and looked at you and looked at me and says, you know what? I'm going to hold a grudge to you. Even after I die and raise again, I'm going to hold that same grudge against you. What kind of God would that be? Would that be a loving God or would that be just an angry God, a wrathful God, a God that does not forgive, 
a God that holds on to our sins, a God that, you know, that would be some someone totally different than the God we see in the scriptures. Jesus the Christ forgave us, amen? So if he forgave us for all the things that we did to him and all those people that did all that stuff to him during the time he was on the earthly ministry, how will we ever dare say, listen, I'm not going to forgive you because we will have no excuse when you compare the forgiveness that we're trying to offer to one another compared to the forgiveness that Jesus offered all the whole world for all eternity, once for all, he offers us forgiveness. How would we be even like looking at one another with grudges? And then if you take it from that perspective, <clears throat> Jesus, an innocent man dying for a guilty world, amen, and still forgave us for our sins and trespasses. Why would we ever think that we should be holding on to unforgiveness? Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. So whatever that fault is, you notice the scripture doesn't describe the fault. Let's read it and amplify just in case. Amen. The amplifier has a little bit more sauce on it. Proverbs 17, 9 and amplifies says, He who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. Amen. That actually after love. But he who repeats, or listen to this, or gossips about a matter, separates intimate friends. Close friends can be separated because of gossip. Amen. Because somebody repeating something outside of the conversation between that person, that's gossip. About a matter separates intimate friends. And intimate means close. Close friends will be separated due to unforgiveness. So this is deeper than what I thought, right? This is deeper than that. He who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. Amen. And now I'm starting to understand um, some situations that I've seen and that I see um, why people cover, amen, um, things. Because they're seeking for love and they're believing and they're trusting, amen. Um, I'm not saying I, I'm not against um, sin to be exposed. Sin should be exposed. Amen. Because if I love you, you love me. Amen. And if I'm found in sin, if you love me, please expose me. Amen. So that way I'll snap out of it, wake up. Amen. Although it might be a little embarrassing, although it might be a little this, that, and third, but because you love me, you will expose my sin and help me out of that sin. Help me to get back on the right track. That's out of love. Amen. Cover me in prayer, amen, and I'll cover you in prayer, but please don't let me dwell on a fault. Don't let me don't let me stay in sin. If you love me, help me, amen, because an act of love, love demonstrates. Love is an action word. Love doesn't <clears throat> keep you on, or keep you in a place where you're in unforgiveness, you're in sin, or anything like that. If you love me, expose it, amen, and I'll do the same for you. And I know a lot of people get mad when they're exposed, but that actually is an act of love. It's actually God saying, okay, you can't live in the darkness because you're a child of the light. So darkness has to go. Amen. The lighthouse, the light effect of anything. If you shine light on anything that's in the dark, whatever is in that dark, the light will find it and it will be exposed. So we're living in the light of God. Amen. We're children of the light. Amen. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. A lot of people misquote that and they say he's the way, the truth, and the light. But I get why they misquote that sometimes because Jesus said we're the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and he's the light of the world. So people think automatically it's light, but he says he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm in a situation where I have to run again. Amen. Um, to a, a meds route. Amen. So I have to um, skip out of here. But I'm so grateful that we shared this time together. Amen. Hopefully, if you have fault, um, if, if I have offended you, amen, hopefully we could talk about that. Amen. Because um, sometimes I'll be unaware. And honestly, a lot of people are just unaware that we've offended somebody. And then like two, three years later, you say, yeah, remember that day when you said this, that I was offended. And honestly, I know I, I would be like, really? What did I do? I remember a friend of mine. I was doing a Bible study, and he was connected with me through, he thought he was texting me, but he was actually emailing me. I don't know what was up with his phone. And he said, yeah, you're talking about this, you're talking about that, but you abandoned me, you did this to me. And uh, after um, the podcast, because I was throwing back, I was like, what is, what is this person talking about? And I actually connected with him. I said, what are you talking about? He said, do you remember 
um, I think it was like 15 years ago or whatever, you know, you offended me this, then, and third. And honestly, like I wasn't trying to be a wise guy or anything. Honestly, I did not remember. Amen. But I still said, you know what? If I did that, forgive me, man. I'm sorry. But I literally did not remember. And actually, he was talking about before I was saved even. I think it was before we were, well, I was saved. And I literally did not believe. I didn't, not that I didn't believe it. I just didn't remember it. So I asked for forgiveness anyway. And it really started a, a better conversation after that. Amen. After I asked for forgiveness. Amen. It really started a better conversation. This conversation was going, you know, I was I was literally getting in my flesh. I was getting angry. He was testing me. Um, you know, he thought on this side of life where I am now, he thought that, you know, he could push some buttons and that I wouldn't react or respond. Amen. I'm a man. Um, this person is a man, so we had some words. But then I said, let me, wusa, let me take a deep breath and let me listen to where he feels or where he felt that I offended him. Amen. And after I listened to the story, I literally didn't remember the whole conversation, the whole situation. But I said, you know what? It's not worth holding on to a grudge. Let me just ask him to forgive me. Ask for forgiveness. Amen. And then the conversation got better. Because the Bible says, uh, what a kind word, you know, holds back the wrath. Amen. It settles a matter. It calms situations down. But if I kept on going, um, with the energy that he was giving me, amen, it would have never got resolved. It would have never gotten to a better conversation. And I would have been holding on to a grudge. And that's not where I want to be. I don't want to be holding on to no grudges or anything like that. God bless you too as well. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I believe that's Sister Joyce as well on the Facebook group. Good morning to you as well. God bless you. Thank you for coming to the Morning Devo. So I'm out of here. I'm sorry. I got to run. Amen. And hopefully we can get back together soon. Amen. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.